Sherlock is an overproduced, overridden... People already know who Sherlock Holmes is. He's one of the most famous characters in all of Western canon. He was in dozens and dozens and dozens of stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle from 1891 to 1927. He's a pop culturally important icon and a foundational figure in the crime and mystery genres of fiction that have continued all the way to the present day. All right, finally, Sherlock Holmes. You know what? I love Sherlock Holmes so much, and some people say I'm a little too much of a Sherlock fan. I mean, if you're not seeing like even House, I mean, they did an amazing job on House. If you haven't seen, haven't seen House, I don't know what's wrong with you. Please watch it. Watch it now. Find a way to watch it. Find some magical teleport to get to a video and actually watch it. Please watch it. Wait, wait, wait. Accurate enemies ever. But I saw this video. This guy seems to know what he's talking about. He's seen House a couple of thousand times. The old school Sherlock. So let's see what he has to say. I mean, you can't get this wrong, right? Did you say right? Right. Okay. Animated series set in the 22nd century where he got frozen for hundreds of years and also Watson is a robot for some reason. <laughs> and a Canadian children's TV series starring Sherlock's great-grandniece Shirley Holmes. Those last two are canon. I can prove it! And there's perhaps an uncountable amount of books, shows, films, and other properties directly inspired by or based on- Now the Shirley Holmes thing sounds kind of like something Disney would come out with. Um, I've never seen it, but that just sounds stupid. But, hey, to meet his own. Sean Leonard as Dr. James Wilson. Do you get it? And my goodness, we haven't even talked about the anime adaptations. Let's not do that. Then there are the two recent and still active television adaptations. Elementary plays out like a police procedural in tone, which is fitting because that type of story is arguably a natural descendant of the original genre, and it's set in the US, this time with Dr. Joan Watson, played by Lucy Liu, and it's pretty good. It's not as good as House, but it's a well put together show, and it's very comfy. And then there's Sherlock. Sherlock is an overproduced, overridden, over pissed pile of garbage. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you telling me Sherlock Holmes, one of the best productions of Sherlock Holmes is garbage just because you had one bad season? That's like saying Heroes was bad just because they had one very, 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 very bad season. Was it season three? Yeah, that was the last season. It was very, very bad. The point is, you can't compare one bad season to the entire series. That was like one of the best, it's not even because of Bucks Cumberbatch actually being in it because he's an amazing actor. Everything was put together so great with him. It's, it's oh, let's get into why he thinks it's bad. He's, he's probably stupid. Don't, you can't say that. He's probably stupid. Continue, let's roll it. This isn't just the story of one bad show, really? It's the story of the life and times of its lead writer, Stephen William Moffat. Mo hey, you know what? I'm going to give you a pass because it seems like you're basing your off opinion on this Stephen Moffat guy. Maybe he's a bad guy. Maybe he's horrible at making productions. Maybe he ruined one of your favorite shows, Doctor Who, at some point in life. I don't really care about that. That has nothing to do with the actual show of how great this show is. But. Well, I'm going to just completely skip over that because I was going to about to yell at you about that, let's, let's continue. Apart from a few scant references to other events or the year the story takes place, nothing connects the Sherlock Holmes stories to each other as a singular narrative. On top of that, Holmes and Watson don't change all that much as people over the course of all those stories. This was hugely beneficial to the impact of the work because it meant that even though there were tons of stories, a person could get a complete narrative without the idea that they were missing too much if they read one of them. It also meant that since there wasn't a larger overarching plot that needed to be served by each individual story, Story, they all had their own room to breathe. If all the dozens of stories had tied into each other, people would have got confused and bored, and it wouldn't have been as punchy as getting a series of short, complete stories that were all satisfying on their own. This format survives in many adaptations. The 40s serials, for example, don't tie into each other at all, even though there's 14 of them. You can watch Sherlock Holmes and the Pearl of Death, her personal favorite, and never need to see any of the others to know what's going on or feel satisfied. And even in Elementary or House, while there's narratives that run throughout the series, most episodes deal with their own particular one-off mystery and don't have to be all interlinked. Okay, you know what? I, I'm, I want to be fair about this. Again, uh, like I was told before, this is subjective. Again, epi episodic TV shows, eventually, and again, you can watch any episodic TV show, eventually they do have small things that they do carry on to other episodes. It, it just makes logical sense. Sherlock Holmes has to grow throughout the series in order to become a really, really good detective, which he is at the very end of the series, which... It's, it, it makes no logic sense with for him actually saying at the very beginning of the series that House 
every single episode you can jump into and actually watch it. If by chance you've seen it multiple times like you keep saying you have, you would know eventually House develops a relationship with his uh, little three people that he works with, right? His little three doctors. Throughout that series, he ends up meeting other people as well, which actually changes him. He ends up meeting Cuddy, which he ends up liking, which develops him as a character as well. He goes to the crazy home, and I feel really bad for the people that haven't seen the series. Watch the series, it's great. Uh, and then he comes back to become a doctor, and one of the people that he's actually worked over is now his boss which you can't watch the very first episode and then watch that episode and be like hey it's a completely same series as it was on the second second season of the episode i'm getting angry right now i can't speak but it's it's stupid to think that this makes any sense and then he uh uh, uh give me another point give me another point i'm getting angry give me another point Experiences scarring him and the murders that set up that episode's killer. See, it opens on Watson because historically Watson is the point of view from which the audience experiences Holmes. Watson is the one we actually relate to. We must first understand Watson to understand Holmes. Remember that because this is the last time it ever happens on Sherlock. Then Watson meets Holmes. He comes with him on a case and they begin to bond and almost the entire episode is focused on actually solving the crime. Okay. You're an idiot. Okay. Alright, so... Okay, so, oh my god. Um, it feels like he doesn't know what he's talking about, but again, it could be something I'm missing. Let's actually go back to this. So, we're talking about Watson. Watson's job is to actually relate to the character. He's supposed to show how crazy Sherlock actually is. Later on in this crazy video that he's somehow putting together, he goes and talks about Sherlock's brother, which his brother is to show how his brother controls everything like he makes his brother create they work off of each other really well if you just saw sherlock holmes and you compared him to a normal person like watson you would think that sherlock is at some point either the bad guy or something's wrong with him because he has drug issues he's has he's a maniac he does things just sporadically for no reason but by actually meeting his brother you actually understand why sherlock is the way he is and he does the things that he does you have to implement him in it because you're introducing the characters to actually develop the characters later on throughout the series. I understand in a way he's actually saying that each of the episodes are supposed to be its own thing where you end up just watching it and it's supposed to, you can watch it without actually having to watch anything else, but that doesn't even make sense because Sherlock is developed throughout the series just like Watson is developed throughout the series. You can't just watch Watson at the very beginning of the series and he's the exact same person he is at the end because that would make no sense. It's like hanging around someone and the person is teaching you something and you learn nothing from it. How does that make sense? What logic do you possibly get from actually just making that individual series? Move on to the next point. What of? About 30 minutes in, Watson is taken out of the story to meet Sherlock's brother Mycroft, played by Mark Gattis, one of the other two writers of the show from Moffat. They take time, attention, and focus away from the plot of the episode at hand, just to let you know as early as possible that Sherlock has a brother who's around. I'm gonna help you out with this one. It's called character development. Character development. Sorry, resume. And he does stuff. He keeps popping up just to sort of let you know he exists and he's keeping tabs on what's going on. But apart from- Okay, so what you just said was a character, Mycroft, just popped up for no reason. And then at the end of that same statement, you said he popped up just to let you know that he's there and he's keeping tabs on things that are going on. Wouldn't that make sense that later on in the line, if he popped up, he already lets you know why he popped up and you can actually use that towards an evolving storyline? Compared to if you didn't have him at all in this episode and he just popped up out of nowhere, he would have to introduce himself. He would have to actually let you know why he's there. And then he can't add on to something that isn't there. How does that, how does that even make sense? Are you just saying things to say things? Go to the next point. This that almost a full hour is dedicated to trying to solve the crime. The first two episodes. You know what? If you want to just say things, just to say things because you're bored, fine. Um, maybe, again, Sherlock is a really big thing in England. Um, again, I don't know where you're from, but just based on everything, I'm assuming that you're a huge fan. You watch Sherlock Holmes, you like House, you like uh, even the old Baskerville um, from 19, was it 1980s or something. And I enjoyed that as well. Dude, I'm 
not gonna knock you I'm gonna end the video here because I'm getting very angry I feel that you're just saying things because I don't know um, but we're gonna end we're gonna end it here I, I might just do another episode soon because I didn't get even a third through this video and everything you're saying is infuriating me because I think you are just saying it for no reason I, I, I honestly do don't say anything I think you that's it I'm done let's leave now Sherlock Sherlock is an overproduced Thank overwritten over pissed pile of garbage